new Russian missiles? Are we entering a new nuclear arms race? And did the old one really end? And what about North Korea? What about the emerging military power of China? My next guest says the way that we have looked at nuclear weapons and nuclear deterrence has been an illusion. He details that in his book, The Doomsday Machine, Confessions of a Nuclear War Planner. He is also a legendary whistleblower, the journalist who released the Pentagon Papers in 1971, classified documents which helped to hasten the Vietnam War's end, as well as Watergate and the resignation of Richard Nixon. I'm happy to welcome to the day Daniel Ellsberg. Mr. Ellsberg, it's an honor to have you on the day. We appreciate you taking the time <laughs> to um, talk with us. Um, I'd like to talk with you uh, about, about how we view nuclear weapons and deterrence in general in just a moment. But first, I'd like to ask you about um, this acute problem right now with this INF um, treaty. Um, should, it, should it be saved? I mean, is the treaty as important today as it was when it was signed? I would say so, yes. In fact, we have six months for the kind of movements among our allies, I would say, the U.S. allies in NATO, and movements uh, all over the world, actually, against building new triggers to a doomsday machine. Both Russia and the U.S. have capabilities poised to preempt the other's attack in a first strike if they got warning that an attack was on the way. That warning could be false. It's, that's been true both in the U.S., and in Russia. In fact, in 1983, uh, Russians received signals that U.S. missiles were on the way. Had not Stanislav Petrov, a lieutenant colonel in the warning center in Moscow, decided to say to his superiors, it's a false alarm, which it was, mm. but he wasn't sure of that. And he decided to take that gamble and say that it was a false alarm. Fortunately, it was. Had he said otherwise, we would not be here. We would not be here. We would not be here. And you know, that brings me to this acute threat, if you will, the North Korean nuclear threat. And I want you to listen to what U.S. President Trump said about that threat and, and his powers in the State of the Union address last week. Take a listen. If I had not been elected president of the United States, we would right now, in my opinion, be in a major war with North Korea. Yeah. I mean, that's quite, you know, a, a claim uh, to that's, make. Uh, that's an absurd statement. Uh, I'm glad that we're not in a major war or a minor war with North Korea. Armed conflict with a nuclear power, even a minor one, the smallest one in the world, that's North Korea, mm -hmm. would be insane. It would kill millions of people, more than it ever died in a short period of time in the history. It would not end life on Earth because North Korea is the one of the nine states that clearly doesn't have the capability to bring on nuclear winter, mm -hmm. where Russia and the U.S. would do that with a small fraction of their arsenals. North Korea has at most 10 to 60 missiles, too many, and yet the, mo the least of any of the others. They don't have enough targets for us to burn to cause enough smoke to go into the stratosphere to blot out harvests mm -hmm. for the next decade. But U.S. and Russia do have that. Do, do you think that the president himself is aware or the world is aware of the possibility of Kim Jong-un having this, this, this final attack mode that if he's going to be knocked out of power, decapitated, then he'll use all resources he has to launch a full onslaught on the United States with I nuclear weapons. I would think weapons. that's why there should be no armed conflict. This situation has to be resolved in other ways. When you mentioned decapitation, yeah. that was the threat of the Pershing II's, the missiles that were being deployed to Germany in 1983. They were due in November. The Russians feared they might be coming earlier. Mm -hmm. Andropov feared there might be a surprise attack from President Reagan, whom he regarded as unbalanced. Mm -hmm. And he was had his system on high alert waiting for any indication of an incoming strike. And as I, uh, by the way, the Pershing twos had the ability to hit Moscow within 10, 8, 10, or 12 minutes mm -hmm. from Moscow, giving no warning. For that reason, the Russians instituted a system they call the dead hand system, mm -hmm. or perimeter system, which assured that if Moscow was destroyed by anyone, could have been a Chechen terrorist who'd gotten hold of a warhead, right. whatever happened, uh, 
their missiles would go off mm -hmm. and we would not be here. It was an insane response, exactly like ours, yes. exactly like ours all those years, because I, working for President Kennedy, had reported to him from my work under President Eisenhower mm -hmm. that President Eisenhower had delegated authority in case Washington was destroyed to his field commanders. To, uh, to launch their weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, Kennedy didn't know that in the first weeks of his administration. The Russians, as I say, imitated that for the same reason, mm -hmm. and Pershing too was a threat of a no-warning attack. Mm -hmm. I was arrested here in Germany on September 2nd, 1983, in Bitburg, uh, protesting the Pershing twos and the SS-20s, the Russian intermediate-range missiles, both of which four years later, were banned by agreement between Reagan and Gorbachev. But of those two, the Pershings were far more dangerous. They threatened Moscow. The SS-20s didn't threaten mm -hmm. Washington or our command post. Uh, they, Russian security was improved by their removing those missiles. Right. But the world's security was improved by removing the Pershing twos. Yeah. And now, both parties, both leaders, are deciding to legitimate such weapons and bring them back. That makes the world more dangerous. You're you're going to the Munich Security Conference yes. later this week. What would, what would you, you've been invited? What would you like to see at the top of the agenda? What should those policymakers? What should they be talking about and doing right now? They should be bringing utmost nonviolent pressure to bear. This is not a problem that can be solved, obviously, by armed conflict or violence between the U.S. and Russia because it threatens not only every member of that security conference, their nations, mm -hmm. but everyone on Earth. Mm -hmm. So they should be telling Russia and the U.S. that we should not just go back to the INF Treaty. We must go far beyond it and dismantle these doomsday machines that are mm -hmm. poised on hair trigger alert on both sides. We can't just go back to where we were before. That was too dangerous. What do you think it says about the state of geopolitics today that a famous whistleblower is being invited to attend the Munich Security Conference? I, uh, I look forward to finding out how that is received. Were you, were you surprised to get the yes. invitation? Yes, it's the first time, but, uh, and we'll, we'll see. But certainly what I will tell them is uh, I suspect that many of them there, even heads of state, have never actually been briefed. I suspect that President Trump, who will not be there, has not been briefed on the actual effects if he carried out any of his so-called options, his large attack options against Russia in commitment to but the alliance. That, that's, but that's, if that is true, and I think a lot of people would agree with you, then it makes his ability to, you know, to have the red button and the codes, I mean, it's dangerous because he doesn't have complete information. What I found, by the way, was in 19, as early as 1960, and what I'm saying is true today yeah. now, is that not only the head of state has that button, neither side is willing to let itself be paralyzed by a single attack, either a bullet or a nuclear bomb Step on the capital. There are a lot of buttons mm -hmm. that can do it. Probably neither leader knows any more than Kennedy knew at that time, just how many people could launch those weapons. Mm -hmm. It was not only the president. And since 1983, at least, it has not been Russia. Uh, Putin has officially acknowledged the existence of the dead hand system, which they're modernizing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the idea, if push, Putin were to launch one of these cruise missiles that reportedly, and I'm ready to accept this, does violate the oh, yeah. INF Treaty, all of his people would die along with everyone else on Earth. The idea that that would remain a limited war is simply absurd. Which speaks it's good for profits, though. Right. It's good for building the weapons. Which speaks to the insanity that you talk about in your book, too. Yeah. Mr. Ellsberg, I wish we had more time, um, but we certainly appreciate you coming in tonight and sharing your thoughts, and um, we will hopefully see you later this week in Munich. Thank you. Thank you.